have any heavy breathing into the phone, into the show. All right. We got everybody shut down. Somebody's still making a racket. Welcome to the INE broadcast tonight, everyone. And uh, it's great to have you here on the show. I don't see microphones closed yet. Sue, as you got your microphone closed, Jay, uh -huh. Joni. I'm get. I think no. Shut your mics down, so I've got a cleaner, cleaner going. Down. There we go. It's right at that top toolbar, right across the top. All right. Welcome to the Yanni broadcast tonight. The third show, the culmination of a series that we've been going through on personal branding. And I've done this show now for seven years, and we try and I try and up the ante every year to pull in even more that I think would actually be helpful. And so as you're going through the show tonight. If you've done a lot with your personal brand, then this should be some serious meat for you. If you've not done anything with your personal brand, then make this the night that that starts to change. You're just not going to go <clears throat> play around in the marketplace anymore unless you really begin to know and understand how to use a personal brand. <clears throat> it always amazes me when you see someone who doesn't know how to do art, and yet they're trying to do an art piece, you can tell it's an amateur piece a mile away. But when they're trying to do business and they haven't read not one book about personal branding, not one thing have they covered. I couldn't tell you the hundreds and hundreds of books that I've studied and gone through and tried to work with them. And I've also been trying to develop it for 38 years. So it is a challenging subject. It's the most difficult thing to understand and implement that I think is in business. But nothing can help you more. And as the future goes forward, branding is going to be from a whole other problem side, and that's because there is so much business and marketing potential out there. Remember last week we talked about 3,000 business buying decisions. It's now gone up to 4,400 business buying decisions per day for every American, and that's just a massive amount of pressure to spend their money this way or spend their money that way. And I just think we've just got to be prepared. So I got a lot to go through tonight. Let me screen share here quick and we'll get this show on the road, okay? Should have the INE Network Master's presentation. Somebody give me a heads up. We got loaded and we're ready to go. Mel? Yes, you got it up. Okay, thanks, Ron. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> thanks, Mel. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I want to just read the last portion of this news clip because this is the kind of stuff that gets fed across the web and if you're in business this is the stuff that you notice this is the stuff that you start to pay attention okay the days of passingly passively being fed the news is over all of us as a civilization are the new source of headlines <coughs> now I think it's really significant that we understand what's going on here. You, you can't ignore the fact that we're now moving on to our own broadcasting system. I'm building our journey TV and one day it's my dream this will become a cable television network full-time of nothing but helping people discover, develop, master, and share their talent. And so when you start building your shows and doing your shows and drawing people in this direction toward you and what you've learned how to do, um, we're going to have cut the ice already. We're going to be well into all of this to the point that it really should begin to help you grow and make some significant progress with your career. Maybe it won't take you 38 years like it has me. So personal branding is a big deal and it's been coming up for an awful long time and tonight what we're going to try and do is get into stage three. The idea of building your brand and making it work out for you is what I most want you to pay attention to tonight. 
I think the voice of experience, wisdom's counsel, is just without a doubt the only way to learn in life. If you're so hard-headed, you've got to learn everything the hard way, you haven't got enough life to learn, especially at our age. So the voice of wisdom is experienced counsel, not opinion. You can't lean on opinion. One of our members posted that we should all go see this one particular person, and I do my digging and my homework, and this particular person that made that referral, that person hasn't done daily squat in their life, and yet they're coaching about how to how to succeed. And so you have to be a little aware of what you're talking about and the doors that you're knocking on. If Craig is going to talk to you about how to sculpt better and how to do better artwork, that's a voice you can listen to. If Craig is going to teach you how to draw and how to sketch, he's sketched every day for 15 years. And oh my gosh, is he good. And so that kind of voice, the experience of uh, counsel is just huge. And that's who you want to kind of basically pay some attention to as you move on into building your brand now and doing a better job of it. Be really cautious about who you stand up and go, oh, yeah, that's it. That's cool. Because anybody can come up with a clever idea. But it takes a really unusual person to basically make things work, okay? And we can't learn everything that we do the hard way. When T Craig teaches a course in the class, I know it's involved and I know it's expensive, but you're going to get way more than you're bargained for when you sit down with this young man and try and see what the hell's going on. And in our whole circle, the biggest difference is we're trying to teach you how to make it and trying to teach you how to market it. That's the important part. We're making it a balanced effort. Okay? Hang on just a second. Okay. Sorry, I had some background music coming at me from somewhere. <laughs> and when Craig is is in the process of trying to help someone else. The thing that really surprises me the most is that he is willing to help. A lot of significant talent won't share what they've learned and what they've discovered, particularly the important parts. But Craig is perhaps the least threatened artist that I know and is more than willing to share and have some help for you. A lot I'm getting some complaints now from people that think they have too hard a time getting hold of him and I'm just going to you have no idea how busy this young man is and you need to work through Tammy and the appointment systems and stuff we have in place if you really want to have to a chance to interact with with Craig. We've got a brand new video coming we shot it uh, last fall and it's being edited and composed now it's extremely in-depth uh, teaching of Tamika how to do the drop relief of the dog and the two pheasants. And it's just the most amazing new video that's coming that should be able to help those of you that are at a distance and can't afford to come here for actual class. So please get a hold of Tamari at the company. Um, if you need a schedule of what classes are being taught now and what the dates are, and whether they're full or not already. It's if I were you, I wouldn't wait. <laughs> his uh, time frame is getting busier and busier, and his classes are getting more full all the time. I just saw this on the web today. Most of the problems in life are caused because of two reasons. We act without thinking or we keep thinking without acting. Is that not the most profound statement you've seen in a long time? That is really it. We do something that we didn't really think it through, or then we just do nothing but thinking and we don't ever act. So isn't that not a statement of balance? Isn't that something that we should really be uh, paying attention to and respect a great deal? The three big elements of personal branding are identification, selection, and remembering. That's why we do it. We want to separate you from the herd and we want to have a degree of selection. That means uh, the selection part of that is identification and attractiveness. The relationship is fired up 
because half the marketplace cares about what you're doing and the other half doesn't care. And then remembering to, long enough to actually do business with you is just huge. You've got to be able to understand how it works and then put it into some operation for you. It's your job to brand you. And I'm getting a few emails that sound a lot like you expect me to do this for you or wish I would do it for you and or one of the other masters that are well into this. This really is a master's program. It's aimed at our master circle. It's aimed at the very people that are working hardest on their brand, the ones that are paying attention to their brand, and how is that growing. It's a lot of people don't even consider their brand, and so it's like a, a garden full of weeds. You just have to be able to understand what you're doing with it and how it's going to work, okay? You're the one that's going to shape it. What you sell and who you sell. If your preparation and planning is a part of your thinking, never forget that with every new customer you have only one chance, just one, to make a first great impression. Plan it. Make it all it can be. Create a wonderful memory and you'll create a customer for life. Now that's Mac Anderson and his, his hourly fee for counseling and consulting is 700 an hour. That's somebody that you can put some teeth into the counsel and wisdom. And it really, this is the kind of thing that I think is so darn significant is that you begin to understand the things that will really help you as you build and learn how to use your brand. As you're going forward now, I want you to compare and notice other people's branding. I want you to seriously consider and study your own brand compared to other people's brand. Don't just brush it off. Don't just think of it once in a while. It should be on your mind every day for the next year. Then I want you to figure out some way to experiment with what you're doing and give it a test. You should be able to try different types of branding ideas and see how they market. And that's the greatest advantage now of Google and Google Plus is you'll be able to reference the reaction of the public to what it is you're trying to brand. Then you measure and track your efforts, then you're going to correct and adjust those efforts, then you're going to come back and hit it again, and hit it again, and then never stop fixing your brand. It really is how it all works out. I have picked up the miracles in the doing long before there was even a company been a part of my life for 38 of those 39 years and I really like the thought I like the sentiment I have a lot of people who said oh doc you've just had such a miracle in your life and I'm going well I moved into a direction that I really enjoyed and all I've done is stick to my knitting or my drilling that is and and if you could kind of sense the same thing and begin to realize that you're close you're close. What you're trying to do is move from ordinary to extraordinary. And most of us have a tough time thinking of ourselves as extraordinary anything. We got to light the fire within you. Doug and I were dentists at the time and brothers. We've been buddies for all these lifetime. We used to wear shirts in our local town that had Jensen Brothers Drilling Company on the shirts embroidered. It was our racquetball shirts. And uh, we were the paradox, <laughs> the vernal paradox. Now we're the profitable hobbies paradox. Discovering your talent and do something with it is the way you want to move forward. If you'll watch what other peoples are doing and you begin to help brand yourself based on what you see in other people. When you cross paths with Sam Maloof and you can't remember who Sam Maloof was from show to show to show, I've talked about him all three shows, haven't I? My good God, I don't know how you could grow old and have a better name and a better brand than Sam Maloof if you're a woodworker. And I'm not, don't say, well, I don't make tears, so that doesn't have anything to do with me. Good heavens, pay attention. Look at what Sam Maloof has done. Can you imagine your picture of the cover of a magazine like this that stated who you are and what you've done? and then realize that his name is his brand? 
it's just so so interesting that a lot of people just walk right past it. Artists, I hear artists all the time are starving, starving to death, and they can't figure out what's wrong. And I'm going, well, you haven't got any business background or any business savvy at all. It's hard even when you know a little bit, but it's impossible. Like John Wayne said, remember that one slide I've got? It's really tough if you're just being plain stupid. <laughs> you got to come in and dig at this. Sam Aloof discovered something really unique, and he mastered that uniqueness, and then he sold it for the rest of his life. He sold what he then knew how to do. And I don't care if you're carving the ends of pencils. I don't care if you're a knitter. I don't care if you're a poet. I don't care what it is you're doing as art. You've got to become really good at it and then figure out how to get really good at sharing it in the marketplace. What will happen to the value of each piece of work in your life? Will it gradually grow and get more valuable, or is it just going to stay ordinary? Sells for a gazillion dollars, and it's not because it's the best made chair on the planet. It's not the wood that's in it. And it's not the rocking that's in it. It's not the patterns in it. It sells because it's a Sam Luce piece of art. If the doctor does not give you a year, even if he hesitates about a month, make one brave push and see what can be accomplished in a week. What if you really got serious about this branding thing and you went after it for a straight solid week and did nothing but work on your brand? You got any idea what that might do to help you in your additional progress of your business? If you haven't noticed by now in my seven years, I like just about everything Robert Louis Stevenson wrote. And I uh, read Treasure Island as a little boy, and Robert Louis Stevenson just turned my imagination on, and it's never come down ever since. So when you find something like that, this starts to affect your brand as well. There's authors and there's quotes and there's ideas that you really identify with. Well, they should be over now in your electronic personal journal and you should be going through that journal often enough that those begin to rub off and they begin to affect who you want to become and what it is you're going to trade with the world. And all a brand does is kind of focus that moving target so that the customers don't have so much trouble trying to identify who you are and remember you, okay? If you wait too long for the perfect moment, the perfect moment will pass you by. Does that sound a little bit like opportunity to you? We're going to sharpen the pencil and sharpen the pencil and sharpen the pencil from here on out. That's the only way. Artists tend to go just the opposite. You ever seen artists that are in love everything? We're just all over the place. Right bring people just can't get enough of everything. But that's lousy for the business and lousy for marketing. It's exactly the opposite. You want to focus your life and focus your life till you get better and better and better at what you're doing and the marketplace. Okay. So as you're doing your, your brand, you're supposed to compose and sketch and fashion it. Then you're going to make a plan about how you're going to start to use your brand. Then you make some early marketing targeting efforts, and then you persist in trying to make it work. And that should do it for you. Okay. The evolution of my own brand is I watch the zingers. I watch the things I really like, as you should. The things that really turn you on is where your brand should land. Because that's then what you share with passion and enthusiasm. But if you don't measure and track that, you're never even going to spot it. You're never even going to see the real potential for you. And I hate to see you get clear to the end of your life and then go, damn, I completely missed the reason that I'm even here. Make a chart of the things that you really like. And really consider it. Really chew on it. Really dig at it of the things that are a preference for you. And then when you find people that you really identify with, their brand is trying to help you see your brand. You see that? What they've done with their personal branding, every one of these names are extremely well known. 
and they're all well known for something. So what what are you well known for? What thrills your heart and soul? What's you're drawn to? Not what you're driven to do. It's what you're drawn to do. I pulled this off to put it in the show tonight because I want to do something with heart and soul. But look how that soul is done. Is that the neatest way to handle that? Can you imagine that being written in smoke somehow or outlined with a sparkler in the dark? I'm going to play with that. I that, that one slide really got to me today. I love putting that into the show this month, this year. So if Covey says to begin with the end in mind, that personal dream of where you're trying to take your life, you're going to the other end of mind, dream up the end and keep it to yourself. Don't share your dream. It doesn't help. All it does is complicate and muddy the water when you start sharing with other people what you're really going after. It's a very personal quest. And that's where it should stay, okay? But what you're really after is after you've figured out the general direction of your life, why in hell are you doing it? Why why go why make this much of an investment? Because uh, surely you understand I'm talking about a serious investment. Major concentration of focused effort. And I promise you a tremendous amount of success at the other end of that effort. It's how it works, okay? Invest everything to the point where you know exactly where you want most to take the rest of your life, and that's without exception. It is the targeting tool, and the reason you do it is because you're not going to take your life with chance and luck. You're going to try and design it into the direction where it actually does some good for you and pull your life where you'd like it to. Uh, I've used this segment about Napoleon Hill every year. So those of you that have to go through this with me again, I'm hoping you'll forgive me for just a minute because there's people who still, in spite of my counsel and my advice, have never read Napoleon Hill's book. Exactly 100 years ago, a fortuitous meeting in Pittsburgh completely changed the life of one young man and ushered in a new philosophy of personal achievement that has served as the foundation of success movement for the last century. My good Lord, and, you, and you're trying to succeed and you haven't read the Bible? Does that seem reasonable to you? That young man was Napoleon Hill, young reporter from Virginia. The meeting in the fall of 1908, that's how long it's been out there, gang. He described when the hand of destiny reached out and touched me. Hill had been granted an interview with Andrew Carnegie, the steel magnate, who was then the world's richest man. He drove into the questioning with dove into the questioning, Mr. Carnegie, to what do you attribute your phenomenal success? Do you think he thought about that question <laughs> for a while? I could see a young man, young man walking into the richest man in the world, say, "What do you attribute your success to?" The industrialist then, who is 73. Open up quickly and with wit and his unrivaled gift for antidote, who is a storyteller, began to relate the stories of his achievements. Hill could hardly keep up with his shorthand notes when Carnegie began to expound on his and others' theories of personal achievement. Carnegie lamented, it's a shame that each new generation has to find their own way to success by trial and error when the principles are really rather clear-cut. Three days after the interview, Carnegie invited Hill back and offered him the opportunity to organize the world's first practical philosophy of individual achievement. So Carnegie basically handed him his whole life. I will introduce you to men who can and will collaborate with you in its organization. Do you want the opportunity and will you follow through if it is given to you? Of course, Hill blurted out with characteristic enthusiasm, yes, I'll undertake the job and I'll finish it. Carney withdrew a stopwatch and, and told Hill it had taken him exactly 29 seconds to respond. Carnegie told him the offer would have been withdrawn after 60 seconds. It was my, has been my experience that a person who cannot reach a decision promptly cannot be depended on to carry through with any decision. 
I've also discovered that people who reach decisions promptly usually have the capacity to move with a definiteness of purpose in other circumstances. Very well, said Carnegie. You have one of the two important qualities that will be needed by the man who organizes the philosophy I have described. Now we'll learn whether or not you have the second. If I give you this opportunity, are you willing to devote the next 20 years of your life to research the causes of success and failure without pay, earning your own living as you go? Hale was stunned. He had assumed that Carnegie would subsidize him for his enormous fortune. It is not unwillingness to supply the money, Carnegie said. It is my desire to know if you have in you the natural capacity to go the extra mile. That is to render service before trying to collect for it. I can't tell you in the 25 years I've been coaching other members of the network how many times people express to me how pissed off they get because they can't make the money sooner or the money up front. They're so tired of making the investment of this effort and this effort and this effort and how to get nothing back. And it's got the job job mentality. If you're going after a brand and you're going after a stardom with your life and effort, you're willing to make this kind of an investment. Napoleon Hill met it and he could go on to write the American philosophy of personal achievement. For the next 20 years, he interviewed such people as Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, Graham Bell, King Gillette, Theodore Roosevelt, John Rockefeller, and many others. Carnegie opened up every door every major door to him and in 1928 he published The Law of Success, the compilation of secrets of success from the greatest achievers of the time. For the first time in the history of the world would reveal the true philosophy upon which all success is built. From those teachings would come nine years later Think and Grow Rich, considered by many to be the greatest success book of all time. He had offered essential principles for improving one's health, wealth, and success, while readers today will note that the language of the book reveals mid-20th century America. The principles expounded on the success life, successful life remain as powerful and pertinent today as they did 70 years ago. It, it really is pretty imperative of what you chew on is what you swallow and that is all that you can become. And I, we go through this and we go through this and we go through this and I'm just so determined to help everyone but only some can actually, it's only some that even pay attention, so only some lean into this as a a real quest, a real climb, a real something that you can actually accomplish. I've only got so many years left and I'm determined to help everybody I can who yet wants to have a master's kind of title and do something with the rest of their life. But I am only going to help those that help and those that help me back. It's very important this trading mechanism goes on with every person that's trying to transform their individual lives. We've defined the master's program pretty carefully now and so as I lean into that with the apprentice program I'm going to continue to try and show everybody how to move from an amateur to the master of something and begin to climb their own mountain of success but I'm not likely to take someone else help them to reinvent the wheel here. If you want to build your own program go right ahead. You can put it all into it all you want, but I guarantee you what you want is the voice of experience trying to help you climb that mountain. Be a good person, but don't waste your time trying to prove it. <laughs> what you do, not what you're going to do, is where this comes from, okay? Take this free test. How many hours have you invested this year in learning how to do a better job with the business side of your hobby? honestly and please don't count the hours that you sat down with me and do the shows all these shows are for is to try and light up your enthusiasm and your interest in learning more then it's up to you to go dig it out and I just don't see how it can be done any other way the second one is how many of you really do have a decent business plan if you've not gone through my new videos, please get in touch with Tammy. Let's get you started. Set up 
with what will actually help because it's the only business plan in the want world. Every other business plan out there is an ordinary need world business plan and the needs and wants in the world are marketed completely different. How many of you tonight can say that you're absolutely certain about what you're going to do with the rest of your life? Not many can do that. So you got two choices here now. You can wake up every morning knowing you're going someplace specific or you can wake up every morning and then just go take whatever the day throws at you. When you're our age, how in the hell can you get up that way? Why, why get up and just take life on one more day? Why don't we, we formulate a plan, a battle plan, and pull your life in a direction that you might prefer instead of just any road will do? And if that makes sense to you, then probably moving from all over the place to a really white laser-like targeting effort would really make a significant difference, wouldn't it? It's a way of thinking. It's a way of getting ahead of what you now think. And the marketing effort of throwing up a lightning rod so that the marketplace will hit and strike exactly where you want it is that whole, that whole thing with branding. Can you imagine doing a piece as nice as this one that talks about the dynamics of life and living and that then begins to brand you. That begins to be what you're most famous for is the piece of work that you've done that the world really reacted to. So we're going to stir up your life tonight. We're going to throw a little dynamite at you. Did you know that Nobel was the inventor of dynamite and that's where the, the Nobel Peace Prize comes from? Now, all the money that came out of dynamite, look how he spelled it first. Extra dynamite. That was his spelling. <laughs> and that's one of his early labels. I thought that was pretty cool. When you watch for others' triggers and things that you think that really tickle you, I've had this picture in my life for a long time. The mouse on the rocks is really a fun way to describe something or subject. It's how Apple jumped on that to begin with. And so if you can kind of sense that there's some things going on there and others begin to utilize it in their own products, Jeep jumped all over this and began to merge in a direction where the mouse on the rocks is really kind of what a Jeep does. And those, those are spillover interactions between brands. And when you see that, I think you need to study it. I need, you need to try and consider why has it happened? Why does it work the way it works? I've looked at the road less traveled for a long time, and the road less traveled isn't as appealing to me as the path where no one else has been and leave a trail. And so I moved from dentistry to the road less traveled to then to a path that has never been traveled before. And so Success Mountain has really kind of been my zeroing in period of my life now where I'm going to just stay right smack on. I was out filming last night, filming the mountains here before the snow leaves and about froze my fingers up. It was so cold last night trying to get some more footage of the mountains before before the snow melts. But if the, seven, if the seven steps in making your successful effort up the mountain aren't pretty close to the faith and hope that it needs, the purpose and the direction that you need, the energy and commitment that you need, the hanging in there and determination that you need, the measuring you need, and then the business solving problem. This is all a business is, is solving problems, creative problem solving new ideas, new ways, new things to try. Well, doesn't that involve your brand? It's the exact same process of going through to begin to build the, the brand that then will eventually become you. And I don't see how, when you've gone through the theory, we went hit that pretty hard. We went through the second session where we're trying to begin to build your own individual brand. And now we're going to try and begin to teach you how to use it.
Are you willing to bet the future without a brand? Pretty neat to have a North Star in your life. Pretty neat to know that I love the fact that I picked out the North Star myself and that's the direction that I want to go and that's the way I'm going to take my life, okay? The two big questions of the day are can you brand yourself or are you going to wait and let the marketplace do it for you? If you keep messing around the marketplace long enough, the market will do that. But I'm pretty sure you're not going to like how the marketplace brands you. It's like a movie star who just picks repeatedly one bad movie after another just because they want the money. Not a good choice. We're going to do it by design. A 24 in 24 7 influence of perception and credibility and you do have the control of that so we've gone through step one we've gone through step two now we're going through process before perception and starting your own fire in a marketplace uh, the idea of looking in the mirror the idea of looking at a billboard the idea of a business card that would be handed out to everyone in the world um, for you is a pretty big deal because the whole problem in this entire economy is being remembered for something so as you make your promises tonight to yourself you're gonna pick up these most important threads of interest of yours stay very close to those threads of interest and begin to see if you can't formulate your own compass and test it and test it and test it against the trade winds. See if you've got what you need to help make it work for you, okay? Someone's not going to come along and do it for you, and you cannot keep changing the path in your life. Every time you jump to a new subject or a new concept, it costs you another eight years. You give away the moon. You've got to settle in on what you're going to do and then zero in on it and really pour it on in that one area. Success is not measured by what a person accomplishes, but the opposition that they have encountered and the courage they have had to maintain the struggle against over, overwhelming odds. So don't, don't let yourself tell you that you can't do this. There's nothing here that you can't pull into and accomplish if it becomes one of commitment. I gave you an assignment. Uh, to start thinking about a billboard. If I paid for a billboard, these are quite a you know, quite a bit of money. Some are a thousand bucks a month. And if I put a billboard up, there's 30 million people a year going past this billboard between Salt Lake and Provo. What would you put up there? What would you want to say to 30 million people that might then draw them towards you? When you post something on Google Plus now. It has the chance of crossing paths with 500 million people every day. Do you get a sense at all with the power? Each one of us in the network can post, and we don't miss a thing, do we? We get everything everybody's posted most days. And you guys are all getting better and better at commenting and plus wanting and reposting things. It helps to do that because your stream and the people you mix with are not the same people that I mix with. My, my communities and who I follow are different than yours. And then we cultivate your stream and your mix with humanity in the direction of your brand. So when you see something as strong as Harley Davidson, isn't it some, you want to come up with something like that? Live to ride, ride to live. If mine is having a good time is my job, do you see how far that, that one line has taken our business? My own individual life? And how far the hands that Gary Price developed for us have taken us? Isn't this the most amazing photograph and the most one silly three three word sentence and the whole world knows where that belongs? and what that brand is all about. As you grow it, it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. So it doesn't work as well when you're first getting started, but you got to have faith in it and stay with it. Our whole program is to help you 
destroy the starving artist because it's one thing to do really great work, but it's another thing to sell it well. And so there's nothing more important. The major tool in the whole business toolbox is personal branding. Make yourself a promise that this time next year, you're going to have your brand well on its way. Okay? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to ignore this or to just go buy it quickly or easily because this is huge. This isn't just your normal motivational moment. This is really important. Because when you trade down, sit down to trade with somebody, is it better to just sit down and trade or is it better to be somewhat ahead of the game? You lay your brand into that initial mix with people and you up the odds of success a thousand percent. When you're doing poorly in the marketplace and can't really understand why, it's because you don't have a very good trading mechanism in place yet. If I handed out a thousand cards to a thousand people, it was the last thousand cards of your life, what would you say on it? Should that not be the brand you start to consider first? Now, if you shove that idea even further, whenever you're going to say would be around influencing people from now on, that to me is so huge because the words of Napoleon Hill and the words of Albert Hubbard and the words of Ogmandino came back and touched my life so strong, it's unbelievable. They'd be thrilled. So Robert Louis Stevenson has been gone a long time, and yet his words changed the course of the direction of Lou Jensen's life. Why don't you package your experience and put it out there in a way that it could then begin to influence other people as they come along? The whole purpose of the brand is to gradually elevate the perception of you, and it is a tool that we do by design. It's the law of the heart. It's the seeds that you plant, okay? Rate your personal confidence. I did this a year ago. So how's your business confidence now? Done nothing? You've hovered or have you made some progress? There's a few in the broadcast tonight that have made some really fun progress this year. And I'm thinking of one in particular that's just lit up the Western Hemisphere. Lack of basic and fundamental decisions about your own business success or what interfere with your ability to plant worthwhile seeds. You can't go fishing and do well at catching fish if you don't know anything about fishing. And it's just important that you either learn how to plant the seeds you get every time with well-off patrons will begin to learn about your life and then you become the undiscovered great big next talent. Really well off people like to fund beginning artists that they think are going to really succeed because I bought their work when they were not known and now look at them. They're extremely well known. I went to lunch with my cousin today and he, his mother bought one of Darwin Dower's first pieces. She only paid $600. <laughs> And Eric and I, we were laughing today because his whole family's angry that he got it and nobody else got it because it's just worth a small fortune now. And I says, have you got any idea where the future of that little wagon is? What's it going to be like? I said, down the road. That's the kind of stuff that ends up in museums, gang. That's the stuff, the handmade things that people fight. It's this altruistic seed. It's a subtle part of a brand that most really struggle with because we don't understand altruistic. It's idealism. It's high-mindedness. It's benevolence, loftiness, unselfishness, magnanimous, generous, noble, big-hearted, and unselfish. This is the stuff that, that people really care about. And you want, I mean, when Gary puts up his, his logo as I do art that lifts the human spirit. God, what a what a sentence to describe who you are and what it is that you do. When Ron talks about how he was reacted when he went into the stores in his area of Florida, Ron lives in a really rich neighborhood, and everyone said that they'd heard about him and he's one of the best custom engravers in the area. 
Well, isn't that something that you could be really thrilled with and really proud about? Ron didn't get there by being a namby-pamby about it. He took the risks. He learned what to do. He went and spent time with Ken Brown, got the skills. Then he went to work with it. He took the risk and took the chance to begin to develop his brand. Jose's done the exact same thing. And now Jose really has something to share. Really has some confidence now and some reality in his life that he is somebody that you really could pay attention to now because he knows what it takes to make it succeed. So the idea of your brand is that you're consistent with it and that it begins to build trust. All of my life came from a moment with Boyd K. Packer when I asked him how you had a great life and he said, son, you can dream up a great life and invest every day trying to make your dreams come true. And I swallowed that hook, line, and sinker years ago and I've known kind of where I was going ever since. I really, I moved off a time or two and then come back to it because I just liked the dream of the other end of my life. And when it started to show up from this kind of perspective, it just fit like a hand in a glove. I just knew that that then defines Lou Jensen. That's where I want to be and what I want to become famous for doing. I don't want to destroy the starving artist. I want to help I &E members. We get better and better and better at understanding these business skills to the point that we really have something to share. And when I put this slide together, I just sat back that day and I says, you know, if, if nothing else happens and we do this symphony together, it is the thrill of my life to watch Jose do so well right now because he's now going to turn around and help someone else. And if there's anything that can destroy a starving artist, it's a successful artist that says, you know, it's not that bad. There are ways to get paid well to do what you really love doing. It really is growing into this passionate prescription, something that people can do that actually turn into a reality. And then you've got something to share. You're pulling your own life up the mountain and you're trying to help other people climb at the same time. And I don't know how you can grow old any better than that. The sextant was a way of getting your bearings. And that's what your brand does. You're trying to see where can I take this and how am I going to get there. Now, if you say this, if you look at this statement, it's uh, several thousand years old, and you realize that what you're talking about is this consistent drip, drip, drip of a particular idea, a concept that you get on, that you enjoy and love to death, and then you just stay on it. You can't help but get yourself further and further along when you begin to market that way. Uh, marketing with a brand also involves every sense of perception that you have. I remember when I first saw Malachite, and from the second I first saw this cut slab of stone, I was hooked. I freaking love Malachite. I like the colors, I like the blending, I like the, it's one of the most amazing stones on the planet. But I have run Malachite by every one of you that are in our business and involved with us, and you don't even realize it. And I fish with Malachite. I can test the water a little bit because what I'm looking for is the half of the economy who like what I like. And 90% of you really like Malachite too, don't you? And once you begin to understand that this is a bit of a fish hook, this is a way to kind of get involved with people who like what you like. Jack Solomon has a whole storage unit full of this stuff. He bought a bazillion dollars worth of Malachite to do one whole room. He's just nuts about, about Malachite. And that begins to open up this direction of the 50-50 rule. 
your your branding is only going to appeal to half the economy and that's how it should be that's you don't have to worry about the half that don't like what you like all you're going after is like-minded relationships when Henry Newton and William Windsor introduced the first moist watercolors to the world much of the Windsor and Newton's reputation for supreme quality has stemmed from the artist's watercolor range. More than 170 years later, they are the brand for moist watercolors. Still manufactured, formulated with the same founding principles. I, ah, guys, I can't see how you could do anything neater than that. And when you see that longevity in somebody else's brands and else's concepts, don't say, well, I'm not interested in watercolors. Say, wonder how they did it. Do you, you think that Magnificent Obsession had a part of that 170 years of success? <laughs> yeah, I don't see how you could ignore that. You're trying to plant seeds with your brand. They are seeds. They're going to sprout into what? You've got to formulate the seed and do the planting. And I guarantee if the whole dream, when I coach people in the master's program, I always bring them to a certain point, and then I talk about the, the very best growing old idea I can think of is that you would gradually make more and more money and do less and less work. As your life gets further along, you do less and less work and make more and more money. Is that appealing to you at all? Wouldn't you want to use business tools to help you get better and better and better at it? so that your life gradually gets easier and easier. Have you got 11 second rule? Have you got a couple of pitches that you're ready on a moment's notice to say when someone says who are you and what do you do? Have you got a really down, nailed down way of presenting that back to another person? That should be very, very close to what is your, what is your brand. I've got several shirts that I wear that that's on, and I uh, love when Tam and I get on a plane to go anywhere. <laughs> Everybody behind me on the airplane always comments, oh, damn, what do you do for a living? I want a job like yours. Really is catchy, and it's been fun. It's worked really, really well, and it that was the moment that changed the course of my life. If you don't have a brand, <clears throat> it's going to be tough sledding. <clears throat> I'm not sure it's even worth the work effort. So even if we're talking about a little pain here, a little bit of focused, concentrated effort will bring you some tremendous, tremendous things back. And I'm hoping what you'll have is the chance to target that brand and reach up into that top 10% of the economy and start fishing in better waters. Most of you, your entire efforts are trading with your friends and neighbors, and that's a tough, tough way to go. At least split it into the top half of the economy. And if marketing is fishing, then why wouldn't you want to fish with better bait and in a better fishing hole. Now the next five weeks, the next five shows are upscale marketing. And I've also put seven years into this concept. I've tried to take ideas from every angle that we've played with over these 39 years and bring it into a, a video slide presentation that will trigger your own thinking and nudge your own future. So I hope what you'll do is jump in with me next week and let's get started in a master's upscale marketing program. Five weeks, that's five hours, that's a lot. And then we've got two shows that are on pricing. So in this sequence that comes up on the April season of the, of the uh, year, I want to launch everything around our new efforts for this individual year at the same time in Easter time when when my life got fired up and so 
branding and upscale marketing and pricing are the three business concepts that I think will help you the most. I've got a little quick test for you. How many of you saw that gun grip yesterday? It was posted on Google Plus and it's one of the most beautiful things I've seen. Very, very well done. And the grip in the background, the depth of the background has got uh, uh, checkering in it. Tiny micro checkering in this grip. So then what I did was repost who did it because they didn't initially, they just post the picture. And it drives me crazy when they've got photographs, they don't give them credit, they got artwork, they don't give them credit, they just post something. And this was an auction house who had the gun and they actually did come back to me and posted who the artist was. And so I, I noticed the article, I went through and read the article about him. The article was pretty poorly done. They talked about his life as a shop. He was in his shop doing all this cool stuff like he was a machinist or something. There's not hardly a word in there of an artist. And I do remember that he was Australian. But did anybody remember the name? Do you remember this guy's name yesterday? I bet 99. This was Damien... I'm thinking I, I got to tip my tongue like Nielsen or Nelson. It was Damien. <laughs> Trust you, Lance, that you you got it, buddy. Uh, I it's just so significant that the world has to remember you. He got a pop yesterday without even realizing it. He had no idea that I were looking at it. He had no idea that Lance looked at it. He had no idea that other people saw his life yesterday and connected with him instantly and a way to grow your life except there was very little to support what he's doing and yet his work is phenomenal. So all of you who are listening to me tonight you still think that if you're the greatest damn artist on the planet then the world will discover you and that's how you become well off and famous for your art and it's how you make your money and you could not be further from the truth. You are not playing the game from a business perspective at all. All that appeals to you is the colors and the feel of what you're doing. And, and I just like playing with one. And that's fine. That's a hobby. It's a play thing. Keep it that way. But if you expect to do well in the marketplace, how you lay down who you are, your personal profile that's showing up now on your Google Plus page, some of you haven't done hardly a thing with that not hardly anything of really tweaking it, really thoughtfully trying to produce how it says. I'm going to show you some pictures that I shot at lunch with my my cousin today. We were at uh, Zupa's having, having soup and sandwich and on the wall they've got two pictures about their salads and the words in the description of how their salads are at their place are the most enticing description of a salad I've ever seen in my life and I'm going to show them to you next week. It's just amazing how what you're trying to do to help you be remembered is just why do a brand? Why not try and sit back and say well all I do is kitchen cabinets or all I do is pistol grips or all I do is is cabinet doors or all I carve is gun stocks. Man that's not good enough. That's just really, you know, that's a good mix with each other, but that's not what you're after in the marketplace. You want to enhance your name to mix with that top 10% of the economy. And Home Design Studio is much, much better. Still, it would be better if it was Al Home Studio. <laughs> and if you look at what Al's put up on the website, and realize that he has won the Western Design Competition more times than anybody else. Do you see that up there anywhere? Where's Al's face with a smile? Is it his cabinet work that we're trying to sell or is it him that we're trying to sell? Don't see his first name anywhere. And I don't see the INE logo. So there's no long-term connection with all of us as a circle. 
So there's some thought things, thoughtful things here that I think everyone should pay attention to and begin to realize either this belonging to this group is an advantage or it isn't. But I have a feeling with what's brewing on the frontier right now uh, with Gary Price's life, if Gary knocks a home run like he's trying to, and I'm going to try and help him, that's going to bless the lives of everybody else. I remember the day Al ran into the, into the class with me and he says, Lou, I figured it out. This is it. This is how it should be, and that is how it should be. Isn't that the most significant telling graphic of what is a brand and what's your focused effort all about? You're trying to remember, have people remember and remember and remember you and then react and react and react. And brand has proved itself so much more effective than people ever realized. You're trying to tell the story of Craig Holmes artwork. That is his brand. There's a key here. Unlocks any lock. So with your time left, put yourself in the middle of that picture. And really seriously transform. If the doctor told you you didn't have very long to live, would you just succumb and fold or would you try and get done all you could within the time he gave you? And the combination, the triple combination of my story with your story and our mix as a story is where I think the real strength of the I and E network is becoming. Would you know your place in life? You must stand apart from it. So it's how unique you are that's the ace in the deck, not how common you are. 11 second rule, become what we think we can become. When Brian's trying to shove his name and reputation, this was posted on Microsoft's website the day they launched Bing. And when you get something that hits that hard and then you walk past it, you're making a mistake. That's huge. That's moved his lifelong a million miles. Brian has made every move that anybody in the human being could make to grow his name and reputation. And he just called this week. He's got a show at the Salt Lake City Library, which is damn near impossible to get a show in. A solo show in April now with his work. He's one of only two American artists that have been to Bulgaria for art show. He has gone and done everything he can possibly think of to go and do to build his name and reputation. When they had the egg carving competition on the web with the American Egg Guild, there were five categories, and Brian won all five. And you have to respect the fact that when someone's beginning to climb the mountain and beginning to make it work, and there's that much noise in and around him, and his reputation is beginning to grow, he's doing exactly what he most loves doing. And if you stay with that and you begin to realize that in your binder, your book that should be your journal that begins to be your brand, the 11 second rule should be the first page, your threads of interest should be the second page, your best people that you admire should begin to tell you who you most maybe would like to become like, and then fourth page is what you're beginning to share. So go ahead and stick your neck out a little bit. We're going to boil things down and concentrate and focus your individual efforts. Uh, in a second here, oh boy, I hope I've still got it. I just found, yeah, I have it right here. I just found the very first turbine that my son produced on our first lathe. We bought a quarter million dollar machine to see if he couldn't make that turbine. And I've got it here and I engraved it. And I'm going to show you how long we've been dancing on this single thread of interest. Learn to stack the deck. We're, we're going to increase the odds of your success instead of having it always be an accident. Don't know how you can do it better than Mr. Gary Price. 
we had lunch with Gary and his wife and Craig and and Robin last weekend and oh my lord we had a good time and then we went over to Gary's studio and spent the evening looking at his next major project and I can't wait we're gonna do a show with Gary here before long and he's launching the piece the project that will probably define his whole life and when you can see the things that Gary's doing and how Gary's going at it you begin to have a different sense of what maybe you should be concentrating on what you should maybe be thinking about he's one of the most successful and dynamic artists that I've ever ever hung out with and it was so fun to have that time together and be able to share that but the time's coming when we're going to be able to have a live show Ronnie Bencher's going to help me learn how to go live with what we're doing here and that's just the very next step so that you'll be able to come along on these kinds of events on the Saturday getaway and retreat that the Tammy has this this weekend coming up is going to be just a packed house we got people coming from all over clear from New Mexico coming up for her retreat this weekend and we're going to be able to mix you with that too so the time is coming that you'll be able to do the same kinds of things. I think my view of the world's problems right now is that right here is where most people hover. They decide not to decide or try anything. They don't dare risk their neck and reputation, so they just never ever laid it out. And as you're trying to learn to trade you, yes, I'm asking you to do something that's pretty challenging. Most of us don't like selling ourselves. And so we have to figure out, well, how do I do that? How can I move past that kind of attitude and that kind of feeling? How can I dig? Uh, Eric does wood uh, carving of walking sticks, and he had a couple of them in his suburban today, and we went and looked at them. And he says, Louis, says, is there some more things I can do? And I says, yeah, you need to bring them over to the studio and let's show you some ways to fine-tune your carving, some ways to fine-tune your finishing. And then to turn around and talk, he gives them all away. The Nash, last National Jamboree did 308 walking sticks for the staff of the council. And I just sit and think, my good Lord, with that kind of effort, it's great if you want to do it and give away. I'm not saying no. I'm just thinking, well, what more could you do if you got paid to do it? Couldn't you reach out and help other people in their struggle to become successful and do it on a better basis? Please don't make me focus my attention and stay on one awful subject. <laughs> There's a few of you thinking about that tonight. You're going, yeah, but, Lou and you're shifting your thinking even before you really start to figure it out. Jack of all trades never makes any money. Never. It is a specialist every time. And that's why I go do a brand. You're trying to specialize yourself and your life and learn how to trade it in the marketplace. Probably doesn't realize you're using a brand, but you are. It's your personal compass. Uh, when we go after the directions, I've watched a bazillion websites and blogs, and the good ones, the successful ones, have a really dark background and a really light colored writing. They're strong and they're bold with modern fonts. So when you see things that you like, that's the half of the economy that should you should be fishing with are the ones that are already fishing with the same kinds of ideas. We're not just trading stuff, we're trading art and we're trading talent and that's you. That's what you're trading, okay? Now this one's a slide, if you've got Snagit or a screen capture, please grab this one. This is your learning stage of giving it a try because you're going to take each of these areas and explore them. What you're doing with your brand is looking for pattern. You're trying to see if there's some substance to either your actual 
logo, like Gary's Hands brand with his hands with Synergy, or you're trying to come up with the egg in the middle of the crowd, you're looking for recognizable pattern because people spot pattern a mile away. So all over the place isn't good enough. You're looking for a pattern. Then you're trying to use visualized codes. People see with their eyes first, recognize that match. That's what they're interested in, and that is what begins to turn somebody's attention your way. You're going to try and second-guess reality. You're trying to basically, when I told Eric today, there was a thing called lost edges in art where you leave some of it defined and some of it not defined. We used to carve all the patterns in gun stocks as realistically, every element that we could. Now we begin to realize that it's a little bit smarter to leave some things for the customer to kind of compose in their own mind. Because this is the keys to perception. You're playing with sense of taste, sense of touch, sense of smell, sense of hearing. All the five senses are just huge, huge in branding. You're trying to cut your losses. You're going to make the effort to go knock on the doors of the marketplace anyway. Why wouldn't you want it to be more effective, that effort? And then mix with us. Mix with us as a network. Keep yourself connected and participate and contribute. Help each other because that's ultimately what is going to make this work. And last of all, stir your own senses into it continuously. And then what you do is watch for everything that really touches you. I'm going through a mail order catalog and I spot this custom engraved and I went, oh, bingo, look at that personalized expression of love. That goes in my journal. Then I come in and see this one and I went, oh, that's not an egg I've ever thought about doing before. That's kind of an interesting thing. Then look at that one right there with the footprints in the sand. <coughs> Remember the show I did on Erica in San Francisco? And she's got she makes 15 freaking million dollars a year doing that right there. And if you want to do something like that there, wouldn't you look at her brand and see how she's doing it? Boy, if you can do this kind of work and you don't stay on it and turn it into a brand, you're making a huge mistake. That's just so clever. It's unbelievable. And I remember how dolls were all the years I grew up. Nobody pushed it this far. But they sure are now. I can't imagine anybody sitting here listening and playing with me for this time frame that don't don't have a sense that if you could come up with something as great as precious moments, you would just that old boy with those tearful eyes just touched everybody's heart. I'm going, well, if that's so successful, then why wouldn't that begin to be in your journal so you can study it and chew on it and consider, I'm not trying to steal precious moments. I don't want to do what he's done. I just want to have that same kind of impact with my own art. And that's the uniqueness of it. No one had ever represented eyes in any figurine like that before. That's what his whole brand was all about those precious moments and then these quotes on every one of them there's a selling quote there's a fish hook on every stupid one of them that help pull people in you see something like this that really pops you hard and you go okay there's a place for that in my life that's telling you when you're really attracted to things you need to kind of understand that those are words that, and those are ideas. That's that graphic impressionism that you're after that just captures people and keeps them going. And you see a chain like this with all these, all these Disney characters on. You figure out how Disney's done it. You see what I'm starting to play with with the Imagination Committee. I'm just sitting back and go, oh, wrap. I'm looking forward to the next few years of my life because I'm going to do with my gang what Disney started to do with his gang. Midnight Spell. The Slipper. 
Look at that one, Snow White and Seven Dwarves and a Slipper. That's something I don't have in Snow White, but I got everything else in Snow White. Look who that at the Bradford Exchange. They're the guys. I actually know the guy that owns Bradford Exchange. So, from here on out, when Woody Searle told me my big problem was I wasn't hitting one nail, Lou Jensen, you're all over the flipping place, and I still struggle with that. And I know so do you. That's what we all have a problem with, is we're right brain people. People that do well in business really hammer one nail at a time. I came up years ago with my golden triangle. Paradise is where I live and play and do my work. Split Mountains, the getaway place, Flaming Gorge, and Emerald Bay is Lake Powell. I used to take my family boating down there. And as I grow older, this is where I'm going to grow old in my own golden triangle. And the interesting part now is I can take you guys along with me is on a lot of occasions, okay? So there's a part of my world that's imagination and there's part of my world that's reality. And a lot of my dreams, I'm never actually going to be able to pull them into reality. But sometimes it's good enough. Build your brand in your mind first. Use your imagination to conjure up what do I most want to achieve with this last precious years of my life? Let your imagination take you up that mountain of success as far as you can dream. Just don't tell people what you're targeting. You write it down, put it in your journal. It then becomes your written format, and it will help you to start to flesh out what your brand should really be a part of. Woody Searle gave me some really savvy advice. What you're trying to do is bring 20% of your life in from five different directions. And that way, no matter what, things will tend to move forward. If I hadn't followed his advice in the year 1999 and 2000, we would have lost the company. We would have lost everything. And so these kinds of things from experienced other players, that's the stuff you want to try and bring, and bring into your own life. When you hear counsel for someone who's climbed the same mountain, then you start to really pay attention. The second I saw this photograph, I just went, oh, damn, that's where I'm going to die, right in that chair. That picture, that image, that circumstance in the trees and at the edge of the lake, thats I love that tremendously. I doubt that's anyone else's wish and their dream, but for heaven's sakes, haven't you seen an image that's hit you that hard? Something that you start putting at the top of the list? When I found that sentence, that changed my whole damn life. I was so busy being a dentist, I couldn't stand it. And all of a sudden, I see it on a t-shirt, and I go, yeah, that's the way I'm going from here on out. I'm tired of doing a job job and making a living. I want to have a life. I've had the muse in my life as Discoverus. I've named my boat Discoverus. This is everything in my mind comes from my mix with a supporting angel that literally helps me sort things out and helps me figure out what my next moves are. When I saw this image, um, I just <laughs> I love water and I love boats and I just went, oh yeah. From what you came up with when you were really young should still now be a major, major part of your life and your individual crusade. I have seven areas of interest. I have my library where I do my writing, the handmade crusade, my studio where I do my art, uh, my ideas is my invention side of my life is the hatchery. The power pen obviously is what probably will define Blue Jensen. Uh, my greatest idea in my life is that high-speed, powered, cutting, carving, engraving tool. But what's come out of all of that is the real treasure in my life is you guys. The relationships that are supportive of you and helpful of you are without a doubt the most significant part of everything we're doing. Two days ago when I had posted, I debated quite a bit whether to say anything about Tara's death or not and bring it up again, but 
Oh, Lord, I had a rough day. The hardest thing in my life was to lose that young lady. And everyone, all of you who saw it and posted and commented, it's just you, you really have to remember in your own life how helpful that is from people you care about that react is really a supportive thing. And in the evening, all evening long, things that have been buried and put away, my life is still moved and upside down in every direction. I can't find diddly anything. And one thing after another thing after another thing that Tara had written or that Tara had done showed up in my life. And that feels to me such irrefutable evidence of the fact that our relationships do go on. It's the most important thing we have is our support of each other. And when you watch those patterns and begin to see the kinds of things Hubbard has, and I, he's one of the first people in the next life I want to meet. Man, his life cut quite a swath. He really did some nifty things with his living. And when we bought this quote, we bought this card at Roy Crofter's in upstate New York where his campus was, get rid of your regrets, your what you are from what you've experienced and rightly understood and accepted all experiences are good. The bitter ones best of all. And when you can share that from a point of some capacity, some degree of experience, you literally begin to open up things that you probably can't, can't even imagine how far it can take you. If you're not doing forever letters yet, you really ought to learn how to do them and begin to nudge that a little. The forever letters I've engraved have been just priceless exchanges, and every one of them are still out there in the marketplace. Guarantee you. So, put your creativity hat on and kick your imagination in gear. Let's get this branding thing going. You see an image like this? Tammy gave me this book, Christmas present, and it just change. Oh, it's just the coolest thing. Every time I crack it and go into it, I just go, yeah, that's what I'm going to do with my life. You know, begin with the end in mind and create a dream. Do your map and your plan and sharpen the saw. Build a second, 11 second rule and use every opportunity you can to succeed. Okay? It will make it all work well for all of us. This is my great mentor. He's passed away now and gone on to whatever's next. Bolte and Vonetta. And there's very few days that I don't talk about. Very few days that doesn't light up my fire because most of what I share with you are Woody Surrealisms. The same kind of things that help me are what I try and now package and turn around and share and help you with. And you don't know it, but Woody Searle's influencing all of you and everything that we're going after here together. It's kind of an amazing, an amazing journal. And now we're writing every page in that journal ourselves. Okay, troops. Uh, what I want to do now is just your reactions. And I want to start with Jose. You really are kind of the center of the stage now, Jose Valencia. You're really have accomplished something that's been a dream a dream only for quite a long time but you're now starting to have some reality how fun has this week been for you my friend oh this has been very unreal this whole week <laughs> uh, finally you know we got the check this weekend and I deposited it and oh man we're having a blast with that <laughs> Bill, but <laughs> yeah, well, there's more coming. That's what's exciting. That's just the first of quite a bit here rolling into your life. Yeah, but to be to be asked to do such an amazing project isn't this the greatest thing that's happened so far? Yeah, this has been awesome, you know. And and to think that you know, ten years ago, I didn't have an idea of something like this being so awesome. You know, I never really thought about being this far along. You know, I, I only got into this uh, into this hobby, 
you know, just so that I can uh, do some work with my with my own shotguns. You know, that yeah. was a lot. <laughs> you know, and then here you are, you know, you talking to me about making this kind of income and eventually, you know, uh, becoming a master and teaching people. And it says, I don't want to teach. You know, that's not really what I would like to do. And then I got a call from a young guy here in uh, Casa Grande uh, that he called me up and said, Hey, Jose, uh, I just called Profitable Hobbies and told me that, you know, you might be able to help me. Um, I want to learn how to do uh, leaves. He said, yeah, yeah, come on over. I'll show you what I, the way I do them. And then here I am teaching, you know, and <laughs> everything. But it, it was a lot of fun. And now this, uh, you know, this uh, project that just came into my uh, my life in here, you know, we were blessed with that. So I'm very grateful. And, you know, the main thing is that I was prepared for it. You know, like uh, I was telling you before, I had something similar to this uh, in 2009, and uh, I was not ready yet, you know, and I didn't want to go out there and mess up my reputation, so I declined the job. And now, you know, with uh, the experience that I have, I feel comfortable that I can do the job and do a, a good job at it as well. Yeah. And that's going to give me a couple more leads down the road because of the situation that uh, this gentleman is. Uh, he's going to be able to go out there and introduce myself to other people with similar interests and um, that would like to have the same type of work done. Yeah. So that That's is really cool. Yeah, this one's just like shattering earthquake under your life. It's going to split everything wide open. It's going to mm -hmm. be just amazing. Tammy, you want to open your mic and visit with Jose a minute and brag about him? We're awfully proud of you, my boy. Tammy, can you open your mic up? You you had it going earlier. It's at the top of your top of your screen. There's a little bar there. Okay, uh I couldn't get my mouth to get on. Um, I think that was one of the funnest days of my life this last little while was when Jose called and um, told me what was going on. I mean, I broke his eardrum. I hooped and hollered so hard. <laughs> and it it was just so much fun. And And you said something tonight, Lou, is that and and I just it resonated with me so much that when when somebody that you care about and that you've helped and encouraged if nothing else but just by saying my gosh you're doing great keep going just kind of being underneath them giving them a little bit of lift it it is absolutely one of the most experiences to be able to do that I mean to, and to have it work out for Jose is wonderful Lance is just coming along like crazy um, oh Mel's jewelry uh, I just and Jay's piece that he just posted it, it's just been thrilling I, I'm I, I just can't tell you how neat it is for me and isn't the mixture now going to be amazing? Because we can do it so much easier than ever before. Um, the only element we're missing now is the tie with the other. There's an average of 90, 95 people a night that are on the shows with it or go see the show at some later point. And eventually, the, the, the ability to mix all of us this same way, all of us, is going to be something that, that will, will, they will undoubtedly accomplish. And won't it be incredible? Because by then, we're going to know how to use this damn tool. We're still learning. And you're helping us learn. So your participation, Jose, your willingness to come in and sit down and talk about this, you got lots to do. There's lots of other things you could be doing, but you're here helping make this happen, and now you're reaching back 
the piece of Gary Price's piece that helps helps lift others in the process of doing it helps you as much as anything else. And I just can't think of anything better. So congratulations. Thank you so very much, my friend. Anybody Thank else? You. Well, I got uh, something. Go let ahead. me reiterate. Uh, Lou, uh, this is Jose again. Let me just reiterate one more thing. Um, you know, for all those uh, 95 people that are on the web looking at this thing, uh, some of them that are, might have already been uh, members of Profitable Hobbies or some of them that are considering about uh, doing a carving, whether in eggshells or emu eggs or gourds, gun stocks, whatever. Um, even motorcycles, Jay. Yeah, even motorcycles or uh, jewelry. <laughs> but the thing is, is that, you know, yeah, it's, it's been hard, you know, it's, it's, it's been a long road, you know, I've been doing this thing for about 10 years. So if you're just barely getting started, don't think that, you know, this is going to be an overnight success. You know, I'm still struggling and uh, I haven't reached, you know, my uh, summit yet. You know, I'm on my way up there and I'm just following uh, great masters like uh, Craig Hone and Keith and Darwin Dower and, um, you know, I'm in pursuit of what they're doing, you know, as far as the quality. But uh, for you guys that are just getting started, you know, uh, call somebody, you know, that has been doing it for a while. You know, don't hesitate to give me a call or email me, you know, and I can help you through some of the uh, questions that you might have. But, uh, you know, you got to understand we have a great circle of friends here that have experience and uh, tap into that. We're not going to be going out there and doing the work for you. You know, we're going to encourage you and show you what you need to do. But the main thing that I can uh, recommend is just be persistent. You know, one of the things that uh, Lou talked about here is, you know, uh, building a better mousetrap. Well, that was in the old days, you know, when you build a better mousetrap, people will beat a path through your door. But nowadays, I think that after you build a better mousetrap, you've got to go out there and you know, kill the mouse and drag it around and show it around so people can see that hey, it's there. So, you know, just be persistent and uh, ask questions, you know, get some support, and we're here to help. So with that, we'll bid you good night. Perfect. Thank you, Jose. Thank you much. Ron? Yeah. Um, thank you, Lou. Um we're talking about branding. I I think I started building a brand before I even know what knew what a brand was. Um, it started back when I joined the Woodworking Guild in Pennsylvania, and then uh, started working for American Woodworker Magazine, and uh, did the woodworking shows with them. And then that graduated to get me in with the Walt Tools demonstrating for them. But what happened as I look back on it. Um, and if somebody heard the story, take a break, go get a drink of water. But when I was with the Walt Tools, one of the big shows in the country was the IWF in Atlanta, and it's an international show. And companies from all over the world came there. It took up both several floors, I think like four or five floors plus the stadium. So there was everybody in the world was there marketing their products from little nuts and bolts to big machines that you put a piece of plywood in and it came out a finished desk. Um, but the, one of the uh, the big wigs with Black and Decker who owned DeWalt pulled me aside and said, Ron, you and I are going to dinner tonight. And he said, just you and me. I said, okay. And I'm thinking, okay, what did I do wrong? I must have screwed something up. And I started getting worried, you know. And we sat down at dinner and he said, Ron, he said, I've been watching and he said, first of all, he said, every morning, he said, you're the first one here. He said, you want to know how I know that? I said, yeah. He said, there's a restaurant up above where our, our display is. And he said, I go up there every morning. And he said, you're the first one here. He said, where are my guys? He said, the other thing is, he said, when the show's about ready to start and all the people are here, he said, I see these people walking by our booth. He said, the owners of companies, presidents of companies. He said, they don't walk up to John Sheck, who is the president of the wall. They don't go to talk to our engineers. He said, the first person they walk up to is you. 
And um, looking back on it, I didn't think anything of it. I, I said, well, I know these people from doing the shows. He says, no, Ron, there's a lot more to it than that. And we discussed some other things and went on from there. But I guess that's when my brand started to be built because a couple of years after I left the shows, I went to a woodworking show and walking up and down the aisles and all the people that I used to be at the show with who had booths and, and, and sold their product, they saw me, they'd say, hey, Ron, come over here. i got to talk to you. How you doing? This and that. And it was just one after the other. And that really makes you feel good. So I guess that was the start of my brand, and it kept going from there. And um, and it, now that I know what a brand is, I can look at it and say, well, okay, I you know I guess I did something right when I was growing up, you know. Well, uh, can't you guide it now, Ron? You're guiding it. You're sharpening the saw. You're zeroing in on what's the best part of who you are. I've never seen anybody that mixes with you that doesn't remember you every freaking time. And you'd say, well, okay, then that part's what I'm going to enhance. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to sharpen the saw and see if I can't make it cut even better. I got my uh, something toward my billboard. You want to hear it? Yeah. Okay. Ron Snayberger, a certified and master engraver, inspiring and helping others to follow him to the top. Excellent. Excellent. And isn't it interesting that now you are you get more and more comfortable with saying it and presenting it that way? Yep. And you, as you define it to some degree, that's all we're doing to begin with is just come up with something. Let's get put our footprint on the sands of time and see if we can enhance that into better and better and better who we're remembered for, who we're really trying to become. Good, 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 good. Anybody else want to comment? Lance, uh, that was Ron who? Ron who, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got to touch on a couple of things real quickly. Um, number one, I don't know how I could even go through a, a presentation like this without that Snagit program because it went so fast, I'm able to snag all those things and go back and read them uh, over and over. So anybody who doesn't have a Snagit program is missing stuff, I'll tell you. Yeah, but uh, big time. I still get them, Lance. He went so fast on some of them. Well, if I missed a been few, here, but I kicked him. I got, I, had, I got the majority of the ones I that were really a important. Lot, a lot to go through. I'm going to publish it so you'll be able to get you some discs and go back through it even more carefully. It's but. a good thing that it's on YouTube and you can go back and watch it. Mm -hmm. We're a little while. I'm going to take it down. So Okay. But I, get I, I had... I had something pretty exciting happen to me today is I got a phone call from someone I'd never talked to before. I got a phone call from Craig Hone today oh, because wow. I uh, I had uh, shown uh, told Tammy about some interest in coming for a training, and I'm still working on my damnedest to find a way to get there, but I got a chance to talk to him for a few minutes, and that just made my day. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys have talked to him, know him. I don't. I mean, he's like... Uh, you know, up on a pinnacle of as far as uh, folks in this uh, network. So it was really nice to talk to him, and he's as down to earth as everybody says. Yeah, he is. So it was very nice to talk with him. But uh, thanks, Tammy, for having him uh, give me a call. And thank you, Dr. Lou, for helping me with that uh, that little pricing deal because uh, I was just lost, and I don't know. I, you said you might have to wait, and you know, have a little. Uh, you know, just don't stay a thing. Well, mm -hmm. he came back said that's perfectly fair in about uh, one second. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm going. Hmm, my biggest commission ever, and then uh, I was happy, and then I said, "Did I undersell myself?" Okay. Yeah, well, there's did. something to grow with. If he came okay, back Lance, quickly, then you priced I, it too low. Yes. Lou and I had quite a discussion about this before he called you. Because I said, you know, this is kind of what I came up with and what I figured. So you and I need talk, and mm -hmm. then, and and you are welcome about Craig. Oh, that was just uh, that's top of my day today. To yeah, really getting a chance he to talk is, to him. he's such he's such a he is such a wonderful person. Do you see, Lance, where what you're doing is you're risking and trying more? You're stepping out into the marketplace and saying, well, I might get banged up a little bit here, but I still think it's worth it. 
I know yeah. that's what's happening for Jay as well. Jay's making some tremendous strides forward right now, and it's just that willingness to just kind of shift your thinking from what it has been to making some new efforts, and it really does it really does help. Well, it's not like you're losing something you don't have. Yeah. So I mean, if they say no, they say no. But you got to set your own. You got to set what you're worth. Yeah. I'm I'm learning that. Yeah, it makes all the difference in the world. And cool. Lance, the, um, what you've just decided to do, you've set your minimum price on a piece that size. Yeah. And that uh, changes a lot of things. Yes. Well, and, and overall, you'll have a certain degree of experience when you get through carving it for that amount of money. Then you'll know whether you got burned on it or whether you mm -hmm. actually succeeded. Oh. Tamika. We yeah. saw that. Uh, Tamika, come stick your head in and say hi to everybody. So they'll know this is my daughter. Well, hello. Hi, Tamika. My, my, hi. Other, my other girlfriend, okay? Oh. <laughs> okay? That's cool. See you later. Yeah, hey, you, you know what? She did too, yeah. you know. Hmm? She's I said she's mine head. too, you know. Yeah. Okay. I'm learning. I'm learning. Thank you. You be careful. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Any yeah. other? Well, I've been doing this, uh, yeah, playing with this thing for 22 years now, and becoming a master is just a stepping stone. Yeah. You're so not you're at the top of anything yet. And, and using the same handpiece, I want you to know, <laughs> with the same turban. <laughs> Yeah, I take care of it. Kind of. Yes, you do, and I love you for it. I brag about you constantly. I can't believe that. Yeah, lady, send her in a handpiece just this couple of days ago, and when Russ looked at it, she's telling us she's not used it at all. Swears uh -huh. that she's not used it at all, except it's the the plunger's flared. The bearings are shot. The whole thing's a mess, and you just sit back going, "I guess we were born yesterday, but not too much after yesterday." <laughs> Go ahead, Jamie. now. Didn't mean to take the conversation from you. Go. Oh, no, it's all right. It uh, you just gotta kind of keep putting one foot in front of the other, like uh, Mr. Lance says most of the time, because that's the only way you're gonna get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Stay with it. And it's kind of like your artwork is uh, like the face that launched a thousand ships. It's going to take you where it decides to take you. Mm -hmm. And isn't it a joy to begin to know that you I mean, if you look at Mel's life, it's what he started with his life. He stayed on the things that he's good at and that he's interested in. And look where it's landed him now. I just sit back and go, stick with those interests. Those threads of interest are just huge because they will lead you right to where you should be playing every time. So. Um, Jay wanted to say something. Yep, Jay's turn. Go for it, Jay. I, who, uh, oh, am I awake now? No, yes. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, come on now. <laughs> no, you know, you're saying, you know, there's times, you know, and I think I've said this to uh, Tim Ray and a few other people. You know, I know I've said it to Ron, you know. There's times that, especially with this group we have here, you know, people doing eggshells and, you know, wood and gun stocks, you know, uh, Mel doing, you know, his, his jewelry and metal engraving, you know, everybody's been in it for so long. There's times that I definitely feel like I'm, you know, kind of wild card out there on my own somewhere. Um, you know, one, because I, I end up going, I mean, totally different from what everybody else is doing. You know, I headed towards motorcycles. Don't get me wrong, I love the heck out of it, especially yeah. getting to spend all summer doing car shows, bike shows, and bike rallies. <laughs> you know, yeah, hey, you can't ask for a better life. No, nope, you um, can't. You know, if you stop and think about it, come come June, I think it's June, and Tim Rake might even be able to, I think come June will be two years wow. that I've had my equipment. Yeah. And I got a couple of phone calls today. I don't know, some of me, I can't remember if I posted or not, I did a uh, bowl glass bowl for a company in Missouri called uh, Keltoy uh, Vineyards. Mm -hmm. 
um, I guess they actually got the bowl today, and I got a phone call from them. Okay. There's a friend of theirs that ordered it. They knew nothing about it until they received it by UPS today. And the man and his wife were both on the phone, and they were both crying. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, Saying, I wish we would have known about you when we had our glasses done for the winery. <laughs> I said, well, it's never too late. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm your guy. And then I got a call today from one of the bike rallies that I go to. Since I was a new guy, you know, going to that rally and stuff, as far as a vendor, I was kind of down at the end of the line, you know, of which, you know, this is the way it always works. I got a call today, and the guy was asking me, are you going to be at our rallies this year? I said, well, it's on my calendar, and I'm planning on being there. I go, you know, why? He goes, because I've already been getting phone calls and emails asking if you were going to be there. Mm -hmm. And because of this, the laser engraver that we had is getting moved to the back of the line, and you're getting his prime spot. Yeah. Way to go, Way to go. Oh, awesome. Good yeah. news, Jay. Good you know, and it's all for you know, for me it's different because you know, I kinda got thrown into this doing to not being able to do other types of work, you know, getting put on disability. Yeah. So, you know, like, you know, Ron made I think I uh, made a post, you know, well you can see what happens when you spend six, seven hours a day like Jay does with his equipment. That's because I have that luxury of being able to do that. Mm -hmm. Not everybody does. Not to begin with. You know. You know, and for me, some of my days aren't six, seven hours. Some of them are 10, 12, 14 hours. You know, may not be because I have orders, but it because I'll get caught up in a new technique or a new style or a new pattern that I want to work on, and I just, you know, I'll sit there and just, you know, go forever. Time just flies. And I finally found a guy up in Massachusetts that's, that has been doing motorcycle engravings for over 30 years. Oh wow! And oh, wow. send him send him an email and say, hey, you know, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing, and you know, I'm learning. I would like your feedback, your opinion on a couple of the pieces. And I figured maybe I'll hear back from him. Maybe I won't. The next morning, I had an email from him. No kidding. First question was, how long did you say you've been doing this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're doing good. Here are my few recommendations. Email me anytime. Here's my personal phone number. Oh, bingo. And you yeah. may, Lou, you may have heard of him, may have seen him still. It's called a Schloss Engraving mm -hmm. yep. out of Massachusetts. Yep. Um, it's, it's the man himself that I'm talking to. And well, and isn't it, isn't it amazing, Jay, that you've climbed up far enough on your own to get to a point where you can interact with him on a on a basis at all, because he he's so good that if you weren't quite good, he wouldn't even interact with you. He wouldn't even give you the time of day. But that's and just that it. I haven't lot. done this on my own. I've done this with yeah. help from Mel and help from you and help from Ron and Tamari. Yeah, you know, whenever I've had a that. question, you guys have always answered them for me. You've done the 14 hours of playing with it. That's what makes it work. That really you is. You've got the drive to go for it. Yeah. That's what makes all the difference in the world. Well, like Lou always yeah. says, you know, having fun. <laughs> it's never felt like work to me. It's, it's an obsession. Is, True, it is an obsession. <laughs> it's, it's very more, addictive. It's more addictive than crack, yeah, but addictive. what a way to go. Yeah. That's so true. Well, it's just like, you know, I finally came up, you know, with a little company logo, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I'm having okay. this put on my new banner as soon as it's supposed to be on there. I want to help it better get it better get there. Uh, so once I get my new banner, I'll get pictures of it, you know, and post it up and stuff. But post it's on my, le yeah, my letterhead that I use and all that. And for me, my little deal is a customer is not a customer, just a customer. They're a friend for life. Yeah. And to me, you if you have a happy customer, customer, that's exactly what they're going to be as a friend for life. Move them from a customer to a patron. A patron and a client is a friend. It's an ongoing repeat relationship that you're after. Customer's not a business. Customer's one-time sale, and it is not going to pay the bills. It's the ongoing ones that really make your life get better and better and better. So your thinking is really right on the money, Jay. Proud of you. 
I'm very, trying. Very good. <laughs> you are trying. Yes, you are. And the better you get with each job, Jay, the owner of that particular job is going to brag about you. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to. The wor motorcycle world is a very word of mouth kind of bunch. Oh, yes. They, they see yep. something done and they go, who did that? Where did that? And they, as long as they know you, okay. And if you've got a decent brand, they'll remember who you are and be able to refer you. Now on the web, they can find you. Find well, you just like that last piece that I did with the, uh, the air assault wings. Um, yeah. I think you think made a comment on about my stippling that I'd done on it. Mm -hmm. um, I actually did that as a sample piece that I can set on my table to show you know some of the things that I do. Because <laughs> those derby covers were actually used derby covers. Yeah. And so I figure if I can do up a few, so I can set them on my table. In fact, I've got a, uh, a chrome rim, a uh, motorcycle rim coming in mm -hmm. that I'll be able to do up as a sample and set out in front of my table. Yeah. Um, but yeah. a guy yeah. saw that and goes, hey, I wore, that, I wore that on my chest when I was in the Army. Can you do one of those for me? Yeah. Absolutely. Sure, not a problem. I said either you can send me your part or I will pick up a new part and do it and ship it to you. And the more we play on Google Plus with what we're doing, your brand and your name is going to reach out and reach out in ways that has never been possible in business before. Your, your ability to penetrate like-minded relationships. You need to think, Jay, now of starting uh, a brand or a community get ready to do a community like Lance Larson has done with his gun engraving community. Do you see how fast he got 70 new members of that community in one week? 70. You think of that. So start custom motorcycle engraving community. Let's we'll show you how and get going and get that done and get it posted. Grab the name especially. Come up with a really I mean, Lance's name is pretty ordinary, except it's exactly what he wants his future to be. It's a gun stock engraving community, and there's a whole bunch out there that are interested in that and that then like to participate with that. And all that's going to do is enhance your own name and reputation because you're the guy what started the community. And every one of you should have your communities up, every one of you. So you, if you've done what I've suggested with doing the, uh, the digital journal is a community that's started, but it's a private community. And now what you do is start a community that's a public one that people can then join and participate in. And it's just a, that's your fish hook. That's your giant fish hook going out into the marketplace. I've done it with all my books. I've done it with Discovery Studio Circle. I'm doing it with Opportunity Intersection. I'm nudging all these concepts out into the general marketplace. And who I'm really looking for is people that don't have a clue who we are. You know, it's it's one thing to play with you guys that all are participating and have a membership and are or have been buying equipment and stuff from us for years, but what we're after now is brand new people. And the community is how is how to do that. People that are interested in motorcycles. So if you see the great brands like West Coast Choppers or the what's the Orange Chopper guys? What's their Orange County Choppers. Orange County. Orange County. Look at something that's similar to that. Okay. Something that has you can't use their brands, obviously, but you don't want to get too far away either, because they're really successful. And then you look at you got Harley here and you've got West Coast Choppers here and you got Orange Choppers and you got all this stuff going on. Well, what you really do is custom, Jay. You Harley, do you don't have to stuff. have Harley. You don't have to have um, the Harley. All you have to have is the shield, and everybody knows what it is. Well, and you can just you, I don't yeah. think you need so to use the shield, Tammy. I no, you shield. can't use the shield. I'm not saying that, Lou. I'm saying the branding process is that you don't have to have the name. You don't have to have anything. When you see the shield, you know it's a Harley. Yeah. It's just like the Nike um, uh, check mark. Listen, all I wanted to do is just get on really quick and say I've got to go and thank you very much and it's been wonderful and Jay I'm thrilled I am super thrilled you've accomplished a lot in two years 
Yeah. No, thank you. Uh, I, I'm I'm just proud of you all. Okay, uh, good night, everybody. Superstars. Thanks, Tam. Great Kay. for coming on. Thank good you. Thank you. Night, it was Tam. good. 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 Wonderful good. night. Okay, good night. Debbie or, Debbie or Sue, do you guys either one of you or Joni, do you want to say something? Raise your hand and I'll open the well, mic up. Okay, Joni. I, I know I was just going to say good night. I'm 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 not it's too, feeling very too, late. So I, I think I just better call it a night and I'll see you on next week. Well, All right. tomorrow night I guess you're gonna be on tonight. Yeah, tomorrow night. Thank you, Joni. Right. Good to have you here, dear. All right, thank you. Bye -bye. Good night, Joni. Take good care night, of Joni. Take care, be careful, dude. Thank you all. Sue, what are you up to tonight, lady? Well, right now I have been figuring out new ways to put my blind angel on things. And okay. one of the things that I want to do is I want to get, well, one of the things that I'm going to do this summer, when I go to blind camp, I'm craft director, mm -hmm. I will um, be doing wine bottle type crafts, or at least bottle crafts. And one of the things that we're going to do is wind chimes. The other thing is red knit candlesticks. So, you know. That's just awesome. The wine bottle and, and just switch places, you know. The, the top yeah. half is now the bottom. Well, <laughs> anyway, one of, the, one of the things that I want to do is I'm going to make some for myself. I'm going to put the blind angel flying so that when you light your candle you can see the blind angel flying all over the room. Wow. And I'm going to let you know how that works. I, I've been thinking about this. I've been trying to... I want several different style angels. But all of them, you know, um, not not very fine. That They're more impressions. But anyway, that that's my big project this weekend is to go after that. Way cool. I'll give you a little quick idea. What's that? It's a million, million dollar idea. Uh, a lady met me at a show in uh, Philadelphia years ago and she sent me a bottle of wine and asked me to drill a hole in the back of it down at the base. Uh -huh. And with the drill you can do that. You can do it without shattering the whole bottle. Then she threaded in the Christmas lights, the little individual lights. She would push them through the hole. So yeah. the whole bottle was filled up with a string of Christmas lights, and then she'd plug it in. And it just lit up everything. It was one of the prettiest Christmas dis decoration things I had ever seen. Very hard to do with traditional any other tools. But we have the ability with the drill to do that perforation, and I've thought two or three times it would just, I think you could make a whole damn life around just doing and selling that. Every restaurant will want one, a bottle of wine, a bottle that's just a glass bottle that looks like a bottle of wine that's lit up for Christmas. And so it's right. just so, such a so unique idea that you should plug that in. If you're going to mess with wine, I would look at that. That might be something that would work for you. So I... I Carve a hole, and then I do the the hot water and cold water to. Um, no, 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 no. You just carve the hole with the drill into the bottle. You don't have to water it down. It won't break it. It'll cut it through just fine. Just go slow so you don't shatter the glass. Okay. But make it big. Make it big enough so that the head of those little Christmas lights, and you get a string of them, the smaller strings. I think they have ones with 20 or 25 lights on them. Yeah. And you just shove them through the hole one at a time and then leave the plug outside of the glass and plug it in. And it lights the bottle up from the inside out. So it's just all you're doing is if you put it through the opening in the top of the wine bottle, then it doesn't look right. There's power yeah. lines coming out of the bottle and that just doesn't have the same effect. And then she put a pine bough thing around the bottom of the the bottle to basically conceal the wiring and just a nifty nifty idea that the drill can do wonderfully where it's pretty damn hard you go get a regular glass bit grass drilling bit and drill holes with slow speed you're gonna have all kinds of trouble but high speed does it pretty nicely I will have cool 
Right. Thank so you. Fun to see how the summer goes for you. It's going to be a fun time for you. It sounds like. I hope so. Yeah. Thank you. Good. 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 Debbie, you've kind of had some success in your life for a long time with as many things as you've done and as great a job as far out as you've reached. Did you pick up anything about branding tonight that might help you? Oh, yeah. Well, I had a quite uh, nice opportunity this evening. Um, a, a person that's in our community came by to ask us to sign a petition, political things. Anyway. Uh, so I uh, asked him who he would know that I could contact on doing engraving on the wine bottles. And it happens that he does. He has a friend uh, that apparently travels to Italy and brings back a truckload of wine bottles every year to give his gifts. I says, well, I'm in the gift giving business, I said. So <laughs> I gave him a bottle of wine that was, had an engraving on it, and I asked him to share it. So we're going to see how that seed goes, and I will yeah. let him know. Because <laughs> he said to me as he left, he says, "You know, you may be going to Italy with him to get engrave the wine bottles." Oh, I said, "I think I be, can handle that." <laughs> wouldn't that be tough? But somebody's got to do it and help him haul that right. wine that's home, right. Debbie. That's right. How good is that? The so cows would miss you, Debbie. <laughs> yeah, they might. I might miss them, but not for long. <laughs> not for long. Yeah, that'll work out. That will will soothe their emotions later. How's that? Just a, just a little tidbit here. I've been I've been working at my craft for the last. 30 years basically on calligraphy uh, and then got into this engraving. So, so yes, yeah, like uh, everybody else says, the steps are small sometimes. Some, sometimes you have, take bigger steps and you're climbing the ladder, but uh, it, um, it's all about your passion and, and moving forward with that passion, I think. So, What was it like when you got invited to the White House? With oh, your that, was, that was wonderful. Um, that was through the, De the Society of Decorative Painters. And uh, we um, we purchased the ornament, and then we painted it per their instructions. We sent it to um, uh, Kansas, and the, and uh, Mrs. Bush actually chose the ornaments that got to go on the tree. So mine was lucky enough to be on the tree. So it was it was. And they told us what we had could or could not bring to the White House, and of course we were you know, uh, had the screening and everything, but oh my god, that place was decked out and it was beautiful. <laughs> kind of a thrill, isn't it? So, you know, so I have I have two pieces actually, and one in the, well, through the White House Christmas tree, and then the following year the Society got to do the, um, uh, it's the gallery um, on the Smith, uh, down in the Smithsonian somewhere, it's the one gallery had a, a showing and we did ornaments again so and mine got accepted so I have two ornaments down in Washington DC somewhere in a catalog somewhere, somewhere you're famous and almost famous and nobody almost. knows it sometimes yep. So. yep it's fun to isn't the mixture of all of us just amazing I mean to sit down and visit tonight and talk about a particular subject all I have tried to do now is I'm building these master's course series so that they'll last long after I'm gone. I really think the subject that I'm talking about with branding and upscale marketing and particularly pricing are such tough issues. They're the, such important business principles, but most people just struggle something fierce with that. And so as we do these next few shows, your participation is this on the end of it is just huge. So can't thank you enough, all right? Thank you. Any, any other comments? Anybody else, Scott? Yeah, I've got one for Jay. Yeah, go, Jay. Jay, uh, uh, try Jay Richardson's custom bike engraving. Just keep yeah. it simple. Keep it simple and put your put your name on it. Oh, you talk about for the uh, community? Yeah, not for your brand. For your brand. Oh, okay. Custom engraver Jay Richardson, but yeah. you don't. I don't think you want to necessarily. I would market custom Jay Richardson custom bike or motorcycle engraving to that, but you don't want to eliminate the possibility of a gun showing up or a knife showing up or anything else too. So yes. custom engraver is a pretty smart title. Period. It's just worked well. I, I mean, just I go to I go to a bike rally, and it's nothing for me. You know, you know. You know, five-day bike rally to do. You know, three or four nights. Yeah, yeah. 
Very common. I, I haven't seen a biker yet that doesn't carry one, so. <laughs> yeah. The next week I'm going to show you a million dollar handmade custom engraved knife, Jay. Million bucks. And he didn't do just one, he did two. Oh, boy. So we're going to try and stretch your thinking when we get into it and realize there's just so much potential when you start. The secret is this upscale marketing. You want to cater to those who have a lot of money and who want their bikes different than anybody else's and they can afford it. And that word spreads now. What, what Jose's playing with right now is that same kind of person. This guy has more money than Jimmy Carter has peanuts and that's the person you, you just got to pull that kind of person into your life and from then on it's just a whole nother game. Cool. Hey, dude, I got a thing about branding here. I want to talk for you. Uh, one of the things that I want to put now with uh, my new stuff going on, I'm going to put it as a uh, beautiful artwork yet practical. What do you think? Um, practical doesn't hit me well. That's not an upscale, high-priced word. Okay. So we'll have to kind of rethink that a little and chew on it for a while. It's uh. It, remember when I showed you the slide that you want to sell the sizzle, not the steak? Right. Practical in a really wealthy person's life has almost no impact anymore. They, they okay. could care less about practical. What they care about is actually they're going to brag how he's going to brag to everybody from now on, Jose, how much he paid to have this done. Mm -hmm. He really is. He'll let very carefully. But they let people know what they had to pay for this. Jack Solomon has that 22-pound clock on his desk. 22 pounds of solid gold. And everybody that comes into that room has to lift it and then calculate what the price of gold is today of how much is the clock worth worth now. And I have had to lift that damn thing. I don't know how many times I've been in and out of his office. And he does it every time. But why is he doing it that way? What, what does it say? If I can afford 22 pounds of solid gold sitting on my desk, then everything around me here is, is a whole different deal. So it was just my first reaction with practical, but I would really, that didn't catch me first. I, I think we want to work on that a little longer, see if there isn't something else to it, okay? Your mic went down somehow, Jose. There we go. Nope, your mic's still shut down. There you go. All yeah. right. Yeah, I was uh, trying to do this, you know, when I was doing the uh, gun stock work. Okay. Because, uh, I was trying to do a say, okay, I'm doing really fine artwork on the gun stocks, yet, you know, when I do the uh, replace the check ring with a uh, basket weave or any other pattern, you know, the work is still practical. Mm-hmm. You know, I was trying to do that. Okay. Well, let's let's keep the same idea, but see if we can come up with maybe a different different word. Bill Janney, Bill Janney jumped on life too short to hunt with an ugly gun. Yeah, and really I see other people doing that as well. And I don't care for the brand. I I just think that shoots you in the foot. You're not you're not trying to sell the right thing. You're selling the wrong thing, and it's a clever one. And right. It's, and it stuck. It really did. It pulled his life on down the road. But I wouldn't want to be known for that. Mm. Personally, I just think, well, I don't want to have them decide whether it's an ugly gun or not. What they're doing with me is your heirlooms and heritage is what you should be thinking about. Because what you're doing, Jesus, Jose, this next projects for this guy in Texas are going to be around long after you're gone, bud. You're yeah. about to become famous here. <laughs> I just didn't think, and get paid well too. And I'm going, dude. That's what this is all about. Still and I give it away. Sure I'm sign it too. Yeah, damn right. Sign and date it. <laughs> when my cousin, my cousin Eric, showed me his walking stick today, and he got him out of his truck, and he says, "Is there anything more I can do?" And I says, "Yeah, he's got his name up there, but it's a pretty official way to say it." And I said, "That needs the date on it." He says, why? So I went through this little song and dance routine of why your name and dates are so important. I said, just watch Antique Roadshow one more time 
And pay attention as everybody who says if a damn thing had been signed and dated by this guy and it's only 100 years old, it'd be worth $80,000. But because it hasn't been signed and dated, now it's only worth $3,000. And I'm going, so what we're playing with here is stuff that's going to last all your lifetimes. Everything we've carved in the grave is still around and it's going to still be around someday. Somebody becomes the keeper of the gun, the keeper of the artwork and protects the artist and hell, I don't know, you might grow up and be famous someday, Jose, who knows? <laughs> you kind of already are. Let me show you quickly, I want to show you my little uh, my little turban. And I pulled it out of a box that I've been keeping some of my treasures in for quite a long time and this is the very first turban that came off of Lance's new machine when he started making the parts this was the very first turban and I've got I have to look at it with a microscope to read there's engraving all over the surface so I've got to come back now and do a microscope deal so you can see you can barely see the writing you see that and lettering, that's just not a good enough camera. Well, almost. Anyway, when I bothered to mark this damn thing and date it and keep it in my life and guard it and take care of it, I built the value into our family circle. I don't think it matters to another soul, but it does to my boys, I guarantee you. Those little shits are making 50,000 parts a day. They've just got another huge order on Monday. And then our family goes through a really crappy day on Tuesday. And, I mean, it's just isn't the old words of, of uh, Charles Dickens. It was the best of times and the worst of times. It's really, <laughs> it really how life goes. But you guys help so much. It's just I have a reason to try and share what I've learned. I have a reason to share Woody and Jack. It's not mostly my experience. It's Jack Solomon, who's worth bazillions of dollars, has done three major fortunes in his lifetime. Woody Searle, who's his, probably the guy that taught me the secret of growing old is to make your living your life. Instead of having a living over here and a paycheck and trying to have a life clear over here, just draw those together. Make what turns you on your business. And everyone says, well, I don't, I'm going to ruin my hobby if I turn it into a business. I'm going to hell you do. It just makes it take off like crazy because you enjoy doing it so much already. That's the fun part of having a hobby that is so damn much fun. You can work like Jay does 14, 18 hours a day and love every second of it. And that's what we're really playing with. And before I'm dead, I hope the word hobbypreneur is going to really be a catch word in the marketplace of business and in, in the enterprising side of this country there's 80 million people our age who are looking for what each of you guys have already found guarantee it 80 million don't know how to grow old don't know how to retire don't know how to and they need some extra income somehow and this is just about as good as it gets and you're all the pioneers of that how does it get any better than that Okay, troops, I think we've had a lot, it's been a long one, but I, it's so important to this, this branding thing nailed down. If you hey, can do one slide more than this year, you're going to nail down your personal brand and get it started. Yeah, Mel, go. Um, what's the serial number? Uh, does it remind you of anything? L3975A? I could put it in the machinery, yeah, but the L's, we went from that middle part of the alphabet. So, you, yeah, you got an early one. <laughs> right there. Yeah, yeah sure. I do. <laughs> if, get, you, get your good camera out and go in and get me a close-up of it, will you? Yeah. Right. I, don't, I don't think anybody's got more life out of their tools than Mel. I really don't. He's just so good with his equipment, and it's just gone for so many. That first hand piece, I mean, you have it. 20 years, you've had it. I've More? had this one 22 years. It's the only hand piece I've had, gotten from you. 
<laughs> well, yes, yeah, smock, you're supposed to wear them out faster and order more tan pieces so Tammy can uh -uh. <laughs> make more money. That's what she's, you know, land obsolescence. That's what all companies do. <laughs> you see, it's um, you take care of your equipment, your equipment makes more money for you. Oh, that's all right. That's a good idea. That should be how it works. I was a well, tool for too many years. <laughs> yeah, you learned, didn't you, the hard way. Well, all see, right, you know, that, that's why we're all kind of unique. You know, every, you know, we all try to take care of our stuff and keep it going, so that way we take care of it. It takes care of us. Yeah. So, and let's that hobby make us money. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Well, well just, just like you know, an old school yeah, buddy right. of mine got a hold hold of me the other day. He goes, "Hey, Jay, what are you doing nowadays?" I said, "I'm having fun." He says, "Having <laughs> fun doing what?" I'm saying, "I'm taking, you know, just Walmart plane and making it unique." Extraordinary and one of a kind. Yeah. And isn't the motorcycle industry especially? You cannot go into a Harley dealership and not see what's going on. They buy the damn bike and then they spend just as much money on the bike customizing everything and tricking it all out. And if somebody's got something new, you all got to have it. It's just amazing how strong that is in that industry. And as 80 million baby boomers, I think I brought this number up to you many times, the number you should always remember is 80 million baby boomers are about to inherit $44 trillion. They're inheriting their parents' fortunes. And it is $44 million worth of assets are about to trade hands. And it's a forced circumstance. It's not, it's not going to not happen. It is for sure going to happen. Yeah, I had to share mine. Somebody's yeah. my <laughs> share. <laughs> you should kill off your brothers and sisters now while you still have a chance. I got to split ours three ways. Is all well, but yeah, but it's amazing. Now the boomers aren't going to hang on to it and guard it the way their parents did. They're going to spend it. So everything that has to do with motorhomes and motorcycles and toys guns and knives and all this stuff the boomers are going to do like they've done with everything in the economy the reason we make so damn many washing machines is because the boomers were so many of us the reason we got so many cars is the boomers all had to have four cars I mean it's driven the marketplace and the economy and it's going to do the same thing now as we age unfortunately yeah, so is the casket business is going to really proliferate because they got to put us all in the ground and we're all going to need care centers as we grow old and all of that stuff. Me and Jose, we got a separate plan. We're going to, we're going to, we figured out a way around that, haven't we, Jose? We're not going to grow old like the rest of you. We, we'll share the secret with you later, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's a special wine sauce. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, it's all called right. Coca-Cola. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coca-Cola. <laughs> Just ask make. any uh, Catholic priest. <laughs> that wine sauce. Yeah, I look pretty good for eighty. Yeah, you do. <laughs> don't you? Yeah. Thank you guys. It's been a great evening. We'll catch you next uh, tomorrow night. We'll see you tomorrow night on the blogging show. Okay. All right, good, good night, night everybody. Yeah.